Welcome back to the Midlife Muscle Podcast. I'm your host, Joey Atlas, and today's great guest is Eric Eckholm. Eric, thank you for being here. I appreciate you making the time. My pleasure. And behind the scenes is his wife, Mel. Hi, Mel. Hello. (laughs) And Mel may actually show up on the podcast in the near future. We will see. Uh, My co-host is actually sitting at Mel's feet because he likes the ladies and he's getting good belly rubs. And also Yanko is not on the set yet, but he might mosey on over here and settle on the rug later. You see. Uh, but he's, he's getting good special treatment from Mel. Uh, so as always, if you are new, just discovering this now, make sure you go to midlifemusclepodcast.com to subscribe, get all the past episodes and get new notifications of all new episodes. If you want the newsletter version of this, which is also free, just go to midlifemusclenews.com and you will get the companion newsletter free also. Uh, I share a lot of random good stuff there, uh, food photos, mini recipes, uh, off the cuff tips, um, thoughts, insights, what have you. But today we're focusing on Eric Eric's story of how he overcame uh, past challenges, being out of shape, uh, not always in shape, being unfit, being challenged, and eventually getting there to where he is now. But before we get too deep, I want to remind you, stay tuned because Eric is going to turn the tables and ask me a big question. He is going to nominate a future guest, and then he's going to share either a website or a social media handle that has to do with them personally or business wise. So Eric, again, thanks for being here. Can you give us a short snapshot summary of who this guy is sitting in the chair next to Joey? Uh, I'm a family man. I have three wonderful kids, uh, Victoria, she's 19 and scout who's 21 and Logan is 24. And, uh, my beautiful wife, Melanie of 23 years. And I'm a martial artist. I've been doing that since I was 12 years old. And that's, that's my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was prior military in the eighties, uh, okay. infantry army. And, uh, so I've been a warrior all my life and, yeah. and that's, that's pretty much who I am. Awesome. And age, uh, I'll be 60 in October, 60 in October. All right. If you're listening to this on audio, <laughs> you got to get to the video version at midlifemusclepodcast.com because you're going to want to see what a fit, strong, healthy 60 year old, almost 60 year old looks like, right? <laughs> Eric is, if you, if you see him, he's giving the eyebrows over to Mel because he's like, see what Joey is saying about and she's me. my junior in age, by the way. How, how much junior? 10 years. Whoo. All right. We got it. We <laughs> I gotta, just gave away our age. <laughs> we got it. We got to talk. We got to talk. Cause I'm on the hunt. <laughs> in, in a very gentle and discerning way, by the he's way. He's on a geriatric hunt. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Oh no. Uh, uh-uh. all right. This is good stuff. All right. Um, all right. So let's go. Let's, so just to, to give context, uh, I met Eric and Mel in the gym training as you guys are almost always training together, which I love seeing. And what I saw you guys a few times, but then one day Patty came to train with me and I saw her give you guys a nice loving hello. And I'm like, all right, they must be good people if, if they're good with Patty. Uh, so I knew it'd be a matter of time before either I said hello to you guys or we cross paths naturally and start talking. Um, and so that was one of God's little spotlights on you guys for me to break the ice and, and say hello. I think I broke the ice. I asked you, how'd you get those triceps? And- you may have. You may have. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite, po- actually, I think you're right. But if you didn't, I was going to. Or you were uh, doing some balancing technique on a box with one leg, uh, pistols or something. Pistols. I was pretty impressed. Thank you. I, Thank said, you. I told you I could do one and you're doing 20 <laughs> of them. Yeah. You can get there too. <laughs> Trust me. We can make it your 60th birthday uh, uh, goal. Goal, yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's go, um, let's go back to your, your childhood. Where were you born? Where were you raised? How did you end up in Florida? The quick version. Uh, born in Philly. Uh, my mom was married a few times and, uh, uh, last husband was a Navy guy. So we pretty much lived in the 13 original colonies. I say anywhere there was a Navy base, my mom had enough snow. So she said, Florida, if you get stationed in Florida, that's where we're staying. Mm. 
So at 77, we moved in Jacksonville and got my butt kicked being the new kid on the, on the bus all the time. And my right. mom said, Hey, let's, uh, there's a karate school down the street. Let's get you some confidence and some self-defense. How old were you then? Uh, 12 years old. So 12. Yeah. And that's when you started martial arts. Right. Okay. And so in Jack's since you were around 12. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you start training. Did you like it at first? Uh, I tried basketball, baseball. Pretty much wasn't good at any sport, but the very first day of martial arts, I knew it was my thing. I was, I was good at it right away, which is clicked. Nice. Awesome. Okay. And so, uh, and it was also the one place where like, if I missed a baseball, uh, my team would laugh at me. Everybody else would laugh at me. I'd, I'd throw my glove down, go, crying, coming home to mom, say, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. First day of karate, I missed the board and it didn't break. And I thought everybody was going to laugh at me. Instead, they encouraged me that, like, come on, try it again. Let's go. Let's go. You got this. Yes. And I looked at my mom. I said, this is the place I need right, to be. Right. Right. Uh, fully understood on that. So how, how did you, what, what was the progression from starting martial arts at 12 and then eventually turning that into your livelihood? Uh, one day I, I came home, my, my karate teacher said, Hey, go teach those white belts and, uh, teach them their combinations. And then when I was done, I don't know if he said this just to compliment me or if he really meant it, but it changed my life. He says, Hey, you'll be a, a great karate instructor someday. So I remember riding my bike home and I go, mom, mom, I know what I want to be when I grow up. I want to be a karate instructor. And she goes, you're not going to be a karate instructor. You're my, you're my son. You're going to be a doctor or a lawyer. <laughs> I said, don't steal my dream. So she, she was trying to protect me, right. you know, but I, I always knew I wanted to be a karate instructor. Right. So that, those words of affirmation mm -hmm. changed my life. So it's so always important to lift people up with your words. Encouragement, yeah. right? another biblical uh, principle, right? Encouragement, be the encourager. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot to be said about that, which we'll hopefully get to later. So you, you, how did you end up in the military? Uh, my karate instructor was a big uh, airborne ranger in the Vietnam and uh, okay. special forces. And he taught karate military style. Uh, he used to use a lot of military terms. And pretty much every teenager in my class, we joined the military because of him. Right. And so there's a whole generation of okay. black belts yeah. that are military. So he was a big Patriots. influence on yeah. you guys. Mm -hmm. All right. So it was, uh, which division was it? Uh, my military division, yeah. seventh ID out in Fort Ord, California, okay. which is now a college. They closed the base down. Okay. And so did you end up teaching martial arts in the military? I, I, I dabbled in it, but we were so busy training, right. but, uh, when I had off time, I would go to a, a martial arts gym and train. And, okay. and some people, when it, some of my buddies would pay me to teach them some martial arts. Right, right. So you were still kind of actively right. doing it through right. the military. Um, so when uh, I want to, I want to find the the. Um, so I, when did you did you open the school right after? No, I got, out of the military? got out of the military and. Uh, Went to college. Just, okay. I don't even know why I went to college. Just, I guess, because society tells you to go. Mm -hmm. My mom. You right. Know. So I, I went to my counselor and said, what's the quickest degree to get out of here? Right. <laughs> Give me a paper on the wall. Because uh -huh. I always knew what I wanted to do. So I, I majored in health science. And then um, as soon as I got out of, and, and the college was paid for by the military. Right. And as soon as I got out, I worked for uh, my karate instructor. And then uh, I broke off when I was 30. Open and, your own place? Yes. Down here in Jacks? Uh, I was in Gainesville. Gainesville. And then uh, I met my wife and we moved to California and opened a couple schools out there. All right. So let's slow down here. All, all right. right. So were you into fitness training at that time? Or no? I've always been into fitness. Okay. Uh, so you've always been like lifting weights, resistance training? Not uh, lifting weights. Okay. Uh, so I remember being a senior in high school and I couldn't even lift the bar on okay. the bench press. So um, do you, are but, you saying the martial arts was your fitness? Yeah. Or, okay. Push ups, sit ups, pull ups. Okay. Like body weight, yeah, basic body running. weight stuff. Train, training for fights. Right, yeah. right. Okay, understood. Yeah. So it was more like the martial arts conditioning type right, stuff right. to help with the martial arts. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's slow down. How exactly did you and Mel meet? Um, my first wife passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, I went down to Orlando and uh, worked for my buddy, and she uh, worked there, and we became friends, or work, work partners, and we became friends, and I just needed a change and I just uh, said, hey, I'm going to move to California. You want to come with me? <laughs> she said, sure, why not? 
Now, were you guys dating at that time? Yeah, yeah, pretty right? much dating. Okay. And uh, so you guys so, head out to California. Yeah. Which part? Uh, San Jose. All right. And you opened a studio there? Yeah, I opened a studio. We had great success right, right away. Um, a lot of people, and, then, and you know, we say words of encouragement. There's right. also um, the greatest motivational speech I heard before I left was, he'll never make it. Mm. out in California. It's too much competition. That fired, and that fired me up right. so bad. So we became the number one martial arts school in, in our industry. Wow. And uh, people were calling us up asking, what are we doing? Uh-huh. And uh, you guys are going crazy out there. And so about six years later, we started missing Florida because we, we started having kids. And right. Grandma was living in Florida. Okay. And so we, every time we'd come here, we just missed the humidity, mm. believe it or not. I get we, it. We missed the palm trees. And everybody right. thinks California is like that because they watch Baywatch. It's freezing in California, right. you know, especially on the coast, yes. and even in the middle of the summer. So we came. I just woke up one day and I said, hey, you want to move back to Florida and start, start over? Mm. And she goes, let's do it. So That's one long? of the great things about my wife is she's kind of like Adrian and Rocky. Right. And if she says, go for it, <laughs> then I could do anything. You know? I love it. So did you guys sell the school back then? We sold it to my brother and um, my best friend. Okay. Back so they were the still out there. They stayed there. Yeah. My brother, it's a funny story. He was, uh, my mom came home from when, uh, work one day when we were all kids. And she goes, uh, family meeting on the couch. Your brother, Evans, is gifted. He just got tested. He's gifted. We we're like, what's that? This is the early 80s. That means he's smarter than the rest of you. <laughs> so, so he became an electrical engineer and I became a karate instructor. He came out to California to visit me, saw that we had a nice lifestyle doing yeah. what we love. And he goes, hey, bro, uh, how about I come out and give up my job and come out and work with you? Because he was already black belt mm -hmm. as a kid, too. Okay. And uh, I said, no, nah, you can't. And he goes, why not? I said, you're too smart for this job. Right. <laughs> you're just kidding around. And he uh -huh. goes, come on, man. So I said, no, nah, just kidding. So we made a great, great team together, all three right. of us. The same one school? Yeah, same one school. Okay. And then we opened another one for him Okay. at the time. And now I think he's running four schools out there now. Currently, now. Yeah, right. Wow. Yeah, he okay. just came to visit us last week. For so his your creation is still up and running out there. Yes, sir. That's awesome. What's the, what are the, what's the name of the schools? Are they all the same name? Uh, out there, it's called Victory Martial Arts. All right. But my school is called Zone Martial Arts. All right. So Victory Martial Arts out in California, there's four of them. And your brother and his team are running them. Right. And here in Jacks, it's Zone Martial Zone Arts. Zone Martial Arts. Right. And we'll, we'll share the socials for that at the end. Um, okay. So when did you come back to Jacks? What year was that? That was 2009. 2009. And then mm -hmm. what was your plan? Like, you're going to come back, but what are you going to do for we, livelihood? We came back. Uh, I bought, well, we kind of traded out. In that sale of schools in California, we traded out schools in Melbourne. Uh, so we started running schools in Melbourne, Florida. Okay, and, so you weren't in Jack's, you went down to yeah, Melbourne. Yeah, that's where her mom lives. Okay. Kids are close to the grandmom. And that was when the economy crashed uh, back in 2008, nine. Right. And people didn't want to pay for luxuries anymore, mm -hmm. which was karate. Mm -hmm. So I, I went through firefighter school and they weren't hiring. They put a hiring freeze on there. So mm -hmm. I was just dabbling. I was floundering. I got depressed. I gained 30 pounds. All right. So yeah. listen closely now. This is like, this is where the comeback story starts. <laughs> it starts with the fall. It, it always starts with the fall. All right. So mm -hmm. 2009, you guys come back. You got a plan. Plan gets thrown off yes. by the economy crashing. School ain't going to work out. Firefighter, yeah. fire department's not hiring. Yeah. And you're trying to figure out what, what yeah, do started, I do? Started having stinking thinking, doubt of myself, doubt of my talents. Right. Depression, yeah. doubt. Uh, you're yeah. not taking care of yourself. What, what would you describe as the, the mechanisms for gaining 30 pounds? Like what were the actual things that caused you to gain the 30? Oh, it's easy. You just give up all your good habits. Okay. So yeah. giving up good habits and picking up bad ones. Yeah. It's a uh, success. I tell my karate kids is like climbing a mountain or, or life is like climbing. a mountain. Exactly. You know? It's yes. hard. It, it's, yes. it's a, it's a physical step upwards and you feel it. Right. But giving up is like the nest tea plunge. You stand on the edge of a pool and you just say, that's it. Give giving up. up is even yeah. worse. The pain and suffering is even worse. There's pain both ways. Right. Which kind of pain do you want to take? Right. Uh -huh. I think the, the giving up suffering one is, yeah. is profoundly worse. Right. I mean, you, you, at, a one, at some point you get sick and tired of being sick and tired and that's when you change. Right. When right. the pain so, of changing is 
is more of a motivation than the pain of staying where you are. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So you gained 30 pounds ish and like how much worse did things get? Like how low did it go? Well, we had everything in California. We were at the top of our game. And then uh, here I am a couple years later, I'm a janitor at a church cleaning toilets at midnight. Wow. We're living, we were living in a huge house in California on a hill. And now we're living in this condo, looked like a tunnel or cave with no windows and just a hallway with three rooms. Yeah. Very dark and depressing and right. mold. And, and I'm coming home from work every night and I'm just going, Lord, how can you take everything away from me like this? And, and then uh, I just kissed, I remember going kiss my three kids goodnight, you know, on the forehead when they were sleeping, kiss my wife. And I just had a, I had a message in my mind from God and just said, look around you. Everything's gone except the most important things in your life is family. Mm -hmm. And that from that day forward, I became a, an, an addict to gratitude. Mm. I mean, gratitude, it's on my belt, it's on my board on the school. It's gratitude is the key to an abundant life of joy. Right. And it's, it's, and I've been doing a lot of studies about it. It's, it's physically impossible, scientifically impossible to have gratitude at the same time, disdain or right. dissatisfaction. Yes. So if you wake up and it's a habit, it's like lifting weights. If you yes. don't, if you wake up and, and you, you don't uh, purposely say, Lord, thank you for this. Thank you for that. Then you just go about waking up grumpy. And, true. You know, very true. Yeah, I, it's part of my routine. Like waking up, the first few thoughts are of gratitude. I'm thankful for Lord. Thank you. And after Yanko and I do our morning walk, I come back. I, I read my devotionals, and then I'll actually journal uh, most of its gratitude and what I'm thankful for. Yeah. Uh, every day, like every day has an entry, and so it, like I phys I think it, but I also physically write it down and share whatever you know, I get inspired to share in that journal. A lot of truth to what you're saying. All right. So from there, how did things progress? Um, somebody, I was just sitting, uh, going through Facebook and one of my friends, he sent me a video. He says, watch this. He, Cause he knew I was kind of down in the dumps and it was called unbroken motivational. And, uh, I never watched videos like that uh, uh, at that time. I didn't, yeah. you know, now I watch them all the time. And uh, I watched it. After I watched it, I had tears in my eyes and I called up my wife. I said, honey, I said, things are gonna change starting now. And then she said, what are you gonna do? I said, I don't know. And she goes, why don't you just open a new school uh, on your own? And I said, that's it, I'm gonna do it. And I, so I, the next day I went to the gym and I don't like prolonging things. I mean, some, <laughs> some people they can do it yeah. and it's good for them, but they'll, they'll lose 30 pounds in a year. Right. I was taught as a kid, the space shuttle theory. Um, the space shuttle, when it takes off, it's like 90% of its energy is that first seven minutes, mm -hmm. just <laughs> full blast. And, and then it drops the tanks. And then once it hits the, the atmosphere or out of the atmosphere, then it just coasts. Right. And then a little burst and then mm -hmm. you're just maintaining. Mm -hmm. And same thing, if, if I'm gonna do something, it's gotta be like that space shuttle. Right. Right? I gotta burn it. So in 90 days, I lost 30 pounds. Were you back here in Jackson at that yeah. time? Oh, so you guys were back up here. Yeah. Your your idea was to open the martial arts school here. It wasn't at the time. I just moved here for a couple of odd, odd jobs. Okay. You know? And so. Uh, but you but you, up here is where you started yeah. like your turnaround. Yeah, we started Zone Martial Arts nine years ago. Okay. Yeah. So you personally, you, you dropped the 30 pounds. Yeah. Right after you made that decision, your friend sent you the unbroken motivational video yeah. link. What did you start doing to get the 30 pounds off? Um, change my diet, eat clean. I mean, I've done, I did many times I've, I've got to 6% body fat. The first time was in 1997. There's this contest by Bill Phillips called oh, yeah. body for life. Yeah, sure. And I was one of those guys with the newspaper right, before right. and I thought I was going to win it. You uh -huh. know? So I, I, I know what it's like to, to, do the fitness and the diet and everything and the right. discipline but it, you know it's seasons of life we let ourselves go sometimes and mm -hmm. all it takes is one day to say you know what i'm just going to skip this and then who knows what one day turns into maybe it turns into three days and then it turns into three months yeah, i talk about this a lot yeah. um in my newsletters past podcast episodes i've done success stories with clients and this is one of the hidden trip ups yeah 
whether it's like a weekend of family visiting and you're like, ah, I'm just going to take off yeah. or you go on vacation and it's like a three day vacation where uh, I'm going to take off from everything. Like I'm going to vacation even from my fitness. Yeah. And that three days turns into three weeks and then three months and nine months goes by and like they're at square one again. Oh yeah. Right. So go ahead. Eat clean. The big, the biggest thing is I don't feel like it today. You know, mm. well, who does? I mean, who, who feels like waking up at four o'clock? I don't morning, feel like you know? it, right. but you just do it anyways. Right. I, I realized in life is there's a lot of depression and anxiety in America and it's because, well, some of it's genetic, but when we're kids, we have these goals and we're, I'm going to be an astronaut. I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. And then you got that in your mind, your subconscious never goes away. And then in your daily life, you do these habits that bring you further away. And those two conflicts, um, they battle every day because yes. you know what you're supposed to be doing right. to reach your dreams, but your habits bring you right. further you away. You get deviated away yeah. from what your original yeah. But as soon is. as I changed, and I told my wife, things are going to change today. As soon as you start, things already get better in your mind. You don't yes. have to reach your goal. You just got to be no, on your way yeah, to the goal. You already start yeah. feeling better. Exactly. Because um, your, your goals align with your actions and your actions align with your goals. Yes. And that, that gives you balance in life. Absolutely. Um, that's one of the, it's one of the key takeaways clients get in coaching. Yeah. Like it could be one or two days into coaching with me and they already, they're already starting to feel better, stronger, more energetic because They've made the decision and they've they've implemented the plan by getting with me to start yeah. doing things that need to be done. They already feel better, right? right? And that's and that, with motivation. That cascades, yes. But motivation is temporary. Yes. You gotta do it enough times to where it becomes a habit. Right. So so let's go to that. You start eating clean to get 30 pounds off. What else? Did you start exercising more? Hit the gym. So yeah. what were you doing in the gym specifically? Like was um, it was it just cardio? Was it resistance no, I, training? I don't do cardio arts? anymore. I think I haven't done cardio any, well, except for punching the bag and kicking. Yeah, you're doing your teaching. version of cardio. Yeah. But I, I used to do CrossFit. I don't do that anymore because my. What were you doing right? back here, back, um, like during this time to get back? Just traditional training. lifting weights. Um, okay, so resistance training yeah. in the gym. Not much cardio besides besides uh, hitting the bag or what have you. Yeah, just fighting my my staff. Okay, so you were doing the martial staff. arts. Yes, yeah. so that's cardio. I always do martial arts. Yeah. And okay. I know a lot of guys who are in the martial arts and don't do it anymore. Were you still doing martial arts when you were thirty pounds heavier? Like sometimes, uh, or what? I would train my staff, but I would have excuses why I didn't want to fight and okay. spar. Okay, so it was like yeah. a. Yeah, I just like, like took a, a total break and said, I'm not doing it. It was a hobbled version of the real you. It was going through the motions. Okay. No so eating clean, resistance training. Of course, the precursor to all this was a mental and emotional shift a, first. A, a switch had to right, be. Right, right. The trigger. Yep, the trigger. absolutely. That has to come first, yeah. period. All right, so the main, the main things were the mental part, then cleaning up your nutrition and adding in resistance training and then doing more of your real martial arts stuff. Right. Okay. And that's really where some of your cardio probably came from too. I seem to be doing all right without running. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, if you're doing the martial arts training that I envision you're doing, you're getting your reps, yeah. you're getting your, you know, low intensity, high repetition movements, yeah. probably some of them very high intensity. All right. So, so 90 days, you get the 30 pounds off. Right. All right. Um, now, how old were you when this whole episode took place? Uh, 50. So you're on the 5-0. Yes. Okay. Um, so I basically started all over. My yeah, career and yeah, everything. Yeah. And that video I was telling you about, one of the things, I got so many triggers from that. It's like one of them was, it takes courage to start over. Right. You know? Right. And it does. Mm -hmm. It's So many people are, oh, I'm 50 years old. How can I start all over? And I'm past my prime. And, you know, it's like, <laughs> 50 is a start for some people. Oh, like man. 50, 50 is young if you're doing the right things. Yeah, yeah. Even 60. Like, Oh, you marry a girl as beautiful as my wife who's 10 years younger. She keeps you keeps you young. Yeah, we, we got to talk off cam about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put in an order. Going to take some coaching from Eric. Um, so so you're 50. You do that. Were, were you ever getting your annual medical exams done like in these years? Were you getting your blood work done? Yeah. Were you paying attention to all that? Were they yeah. ever 
did they ever get bad or like did they deteriorate when you uh, were 30 a few times over? they say you had high borderline high blood pressure right uh in the past few years i went through some skin cancer i had to get off my back and right and it went to my lymph that's nerves. recent yeah that was uh what two years ago yeah. okay so that was a kind of a scare yeah right? understood mm -hmm. um but, but back here 10 years ago ish um, were there more signs of your internals getting bad like besides the blood pressure? Do you no. remember any cholesterol numbers getting bad? That you cholesterol saw? was higher. All yeah. right, so BP was up. Cholesterol yeah. numbers were up. Um, those are the main ones you remember yeah. being up. So those were like red flags for you, like, right? I didn't, I, I wasn't really concerned because I knew what I had to do. So you you knew I, you I would change it. was capable of it, right. yeah. I just right. was waiting. My model, my, my wife always said she's going to get me a t-shirt that says, uh, I'll start Monday. <laughs> <laughs> And I've heard it a thousand times from other people. I'm start Monday. Yeah, we hear that a lot. Uh, it's either all in or all out. There's okay. really no in between. All out or all in. Okay. That works. I mean, because if you're all in on the, the right things, you're good. Um, this is great. So, all right. So 10 years ago, um, you make that big change. You get back on track. Um, well, quick, quick aside, like you mentioned the God part, of the divine intervention. Were you always a believer? How long have you been a believer? I always believed. I just, my walk wasn't with God until yeah. last summer. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to put this aside to come back to. All right. So you... You get back into resistance training 10 years ago. Martial arts is your cardio. Diets, diets doing well. You're back on track. Have you maintained that 30 pounds off and kind of staying in the zone that you like being in? Yeah. Okay. So now you hadn't opened the school in Jack's yet at that time, even though you decided that's what you're going to do. Right. Right. So what was the path to make that happen from that place of limbo you were in because um, you'd come up to do some odd jobs here right right you got the weight off you got that all on track with your health and then you were going to open zone right right so how did you make that happen from she said she said open your own school and i said that's all i needed so the next day we went looking for buildings right uh we found one and uh it's a it's a blessing. It was it's in the right shopping center. It's where Church Eleven Twenty Two is, which I go to. Oh, you're so you're right across from the gym. Yeah. Okay, and it's still there, same original location. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. But it's the greatest location in Jacksonville, um, I believe. Some some of the store owners complain about all the traffic from the church. I'm like, <laughs> we're blessed. Where else yes. can you get three thousand people looking at your business exactly. every Sunday? Exactly. Yes. So it's all about your perspective in right. life, you know. Absolutely. Um, so we opened up. Uh, and we didn't have success right away like we did in California. And I remember it's like two weeks into it, my classes had one person and then the next class had nobody. Mm -hmm. And whereas California, we had like 50 kids in each class right away. Right. And, um, so I, I was, it was a rainy day. There's nobody in class. I called my wife. I said, honey, you know, I started doubting myself again. I was like, I don't think this is going to work. And she goes, don't worry, don't worry. I'm praying for you. And, and then, and right after it was raining, and then there was a rainbow. I said, "You know what? Never mind. I just mm. got a sign. It's going to work." Mm. I said, "I'll call you later." And then two people came up to take class, <laughs> and I was like, "All right, this is going to work." And so it gradually yeah. built up from there. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, how would give me a snapshot of how you would describe your nutrition? <laughs> <laughs> I don't suggest anybody follow this diet, but it's working for me. Right. We eat clean Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. and then. Saturday, we eat cake, we eat pizza, uh -huh. we eat anything we want. We even talk about it during the weekday. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure if I changed it to clean every day, I would look like some of those guys at the gym with a six pack. I would, I would look like you. Uh, you. <laughs> but uh, I'm okay with where I'm at. I'm at 13% uh, body fat. Yeah, that's good. Uh, we, we talked about being stage ready. We're gonna, we're gonna get Dave at the gym to get a stage ready when the kids, when the last kid moves to college, okay. the empty nesters. Mm -hmm. So I'll have a lot of free time. Right. And so, um, I'll probably get to 9% body fat, but okay. it's hard. And, and at yeah. 60 years old, why? <laughs> well, that's the other part of it. Like why do, why would, 
why do I want to do that? Yeah. Why should I do that? Right. And so if you really think about the big picture, just to see, yeah. okay, cool. Just to see. And then yeah. we'll go I mean, back. I already done it a few times right. and I know I can. Right. Um, as far as sometimes when we see people doing these ultra things and I'm like, why? I, I don't need to prove to myself that I'm capable of doing hard stuff. Right. You know, I was an infantry soldier. Mm -hmm. I did try We did triathlons together. Right. I know I can push myself, but we're in a comfortable stage of life where remember the space shuttle where it just yeah. is maintaining. That's coasting. where I'm at. I'm right. coasting. Yeah. You like, there's a, you know, I see a lot of people doing crazy stuff in the gym. It's like, the I mean, it's okay. Get, it's okay. Yeah. They still need to push themselves to see yeah. it. But, that's that's okay to push yourself wisely but yeah. i see people doing dangerous stuff like moves they shouldn't be doing in the first place we have to weigh the risk like yeah. do i want to risk blowing out a shoulder yeah. or a back disc uh, like, there's some exercises i don't do anymore uh just because i know it hurts same. no matter how good my technique right, is right right deadlifts yes. are always going to kill my back yep. next day most people shouldn't even be doing it they're not, they're not necessary yeah. like there's so many other things you could do to strengthen those areas and to properly have yeah. mobility yeah. in those areas. So we with have to strength. modify. You know, right, right. There's so many thing. things you could do. Um, all right. So I got the nutrition approach. So give me in a give me a snapshot day of clean eating. What does it look like? Uh, three three protein shakes in between three clean meals. Uh, protein the size of my palm of my hand. Uh, carbs the size of my fist. Rice or potato, and then as many veggies and fruit as I want. Okay. Pretty simple and yeah, straightforward. Pretty simple. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to weigh food. You don't have to count calories. And right. Just, just three right. and three. Intuitive. Nice. Um, so for context, how tall are you? What's your current weight? I'm this tall. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so six, am I. Uh, the same I used to be six feet. And then uh, I guess the army kept carrying all that heavy weight over the years compacted me. And, right. Uh, a doctor just told me I was 5'11". Okay. And we argued for a while. But uh, 5'11 is good. Right. Trust me, 5'11 is good. Yeah. <laughs> and what's the weight? Uh, 190. 190. Yeah. And Mel's got to be about 5'3", five, 5'4". Five, She's fun size. Welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you. Uh, All right. That works. Okay, so 5'11", 190, you said around 16% body fat? 13? Uh, 13. 13. 13. Yeah. Nice. Good day. Okay. So, and what about Sunday? Is Sunday also like an eat whatever day? Like the, the whole weekend, Saturday, Sunday? Usually, I'll try to do my shakes in the morning just to, just to keep it clean. Right. And then at nighttime, we just go crazy. Whatever you want for dinner, yeah. dessert. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, you take any supplements? Uh, creatine and protein powder. And that's it. No, and then a pre pre workout drink. No multivitamin mineral. No, I get enough in my spinach and stuff like that. All right. So you're eating a pretty packed, packed diet. With yeah. Like a lot of good stuff. Superfoods. Your, your salmon. Your spinach. Right. Your blueberries. Your almonds. Right. Nice. All right. So are there are there any improvements you would like to make from here forward besides maintaining where you're at? Are there any? Is there anything you'd like to improve? Uh, there's some goals I want to hit. Um, uh, 225 on the bench, I've, I hit that with four reps. And it, I mean, there's some big guys probably laughing right now. It's all, but that's that's my goal, that's, you know. That's I want to do 235. My wife is to do um, uh, 135 with the two big 45 pound plates on each end. Right. Just one rep. But we have our goal still. Okay. Um, all right. So bench improvement is one of your goals. Yeah. Uh, oh, and. Uh, we joke around. I, I skipped legs for a year just because <laughs> I, I don't want to. Uh -huh. She's got the finest legs in the world. But I, my in my mind, I was thinking, I don't want to tighten up because I won't be able to kick as fast. And and it's, it's a myth. I, I should have nah, been working you, legs. If you do the right stuff, it'll actually make your kicks better. Yeah. yeah. And so I was talking to one of the trainers and, and he's like, are you hitting legs today? And I said, I, I didn't know that was an option. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, so uh, I hit it last week for the first time and I couldn't walk over the weekend. So yeah, I have to add that because lately in pictures, I've been noticing my body, upper body looks really good. Then I got these two stems, these chicken stems out of my t-shirt. Okay. <laughs> so you're on it now. I'm on it. All right. New goals. Nice. That's good. That's good. We need, like our legs carry us. Like yeah. we got it, especially as we get through middle age and beyond. If our foundation isn't strong, yeah. uh, agile, balanced, and mobile, like 
Oh, yeah. We I just saw a video it. the other day that said uh, three things, a doctor was saying three things that you should take care of. Your heart, I forgot the other thing, but um, your brain, but, but your legs. Because back in the days when we didn't have cars, if you didn't have legs, you didn't get to go see other people. And people are very important in your in your mental yeah, health. Right. You know, so keep your legs healthy so you can walk to places. So and- extrapolating on that, like my philosophy is take care of the whole thing. Yeah. Because without full functionality, you're not living life. Right. Like if you can't, if you don't have the strength and the balance and the self-confidence to travel and lift your luggage, you're not doing that. You're not living that part of your life. Right. And then you know, take it wherever you want. Playing with your grandkids, yeah. going out kayaking, fishing, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like we have to be capable in order to be able yeah. to do all these things. And so it's like, just take care of the whole package. Uh, there's a, there's a saying, you've heard it, discipline is freedom. Absolutely. And when I tell my karate kids, I go, what do you mean it's freedom? I said, okay, I'm going to give you the best example. All right, let's say you want the freedom to eat whatever you want, whenever you want, and you become larger than you want to be. You're obese. Mm. And you love riding roller coasters, and they can't put the buckle on you. There's your freedom. Right. You can't do you're, anything. You're not free to do you're that. You're not free. You're, right. you're, you're a slave to your eating habits. Right. And I said, but if you're disciplined... Yeah, it's going to be, I don't like eating this and all the time, but all the things that it opens up in life. Yes, it gives you the freedom to do all those exactly. things if you want to. Profound, but very true. This is good stuff. Um, all right, so have you ever had a major injury or setback of any sort that like took you off course? Uh, yeah, when I was uh, in the Boy Scouts, I was about, uh, I was 13 years old. Fell off a bridge, an overpass onto a road about 40 feet and uh, broke every bone on the left side of my body. If my head would have hit, I would have been dead. But yeah, so I was life flighted out of there and, and uh, it was pretty traumatic. So you so, broke a lot. Yeah, broke my hip, broke my leg, my arm, ribs. So, man, that's big. Your God was definitely oh, watching definitely, you on that one. Yeah. So. Were you, were, you, were you guys goofing off where you're supposed to be? Uh, the scoutmaster was lighting off fireworks. The, the state patrol came and said, hey, don't do this anymore. And so as soon as he left, the scoutmaster lit one more. We thought the cops were coming back. We saw headlights and says, get off the bridge, get off the bridge. And everybody's running to the end, jumped over the rail and climbed down the hill. I mm-hmm. thought I was where the hill was. And just... Oh, man. <laughs> wow. So, God bless you. Man. Talk about my mom freaking out. She had... My, me and my brother between the both of us she just had 19 nervous breakdowns with all our <laughs> I'll bet. Bones, you know, through martial arts and everything wow all right so does any do any of those breaks from the past bother you now or are there uh it's funny dr d yeah. uh, i went to see him about maybe 13 years ago for a, a back muscle i pulled by lifting something out of my truck right and uh so i went to see him and and he goes, he took the x-rays and he goes, did you have a broken hip when you were a kid? I said, yeah, how'd you know? He goes, I can see it right there. Right. Your spine's all jacked up. Uh-huh. And, and so he he could tell. It oh, was yeah. like scar tissue where right. the hip was broken. Right. It's incredible. I was like, he says, let me see if I can straighten you up a little bit and release some pain. Did it help? Oh, he's a miracle worker. I, yeah. I didn't believe in chiropractors until I went to see Dr. D. He, got, I, he and I have spoken <laughs> about yeah. this. Like there's a lot of quack chiropractors out there yeah. but, and there are a small percentage of very good ones. He's the real deal. He's one of them. And anybody tuning in right now, Dr. D was on here. So was his wife, Catherine. Oh. So go back about six episodes. You'll be able to hear me and Dr. D with the full interview, his whole story. Uh, and his wife, who he nominated, Catherine, as well. Another great story, especially for you ladies looking for some inspiration. Yeah, that was a great interview. It was good. Catherine was great. Uh, great people. Yeah. Um, okay, this is good stuff. We're almost there. So... Before we um, before we wrap this up, um, actually, we might be ready to. Is there anything you want to add before you nominate a future guest, turn the tables and ask me a question, and then we share the website for Zone? Uh, zone Martial Arts. The reason I call it Zone is um, all my life I've been told one way or another to be in the zone in your mind. Mm. Uh, my mom would say, you stop crying before I give you something to cry about. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My karate instructor would say, uh, get your mind in the right state. My drill sergeant said, uh, you better get that way. Mm. And then all of it had to be 
pertaining to being in the zone in your mind. Right. And so as, as Americans or anybody in a first world country with all our luxuries, mm. we miss being in the zone in the moment. Right. Like for instance, when an average American goes on vacation, they can't enjoy it because what are they thinking about? Oh God, I got to go to work in three days. And I always kid around that the, uh, the purpose of a vacation is so you have seven to 10 days to contemplate on how much you hate your job, <laughs> but not me. I, I love my job, right, but understood. for the average American, yes. but we're just not in the moment. And then right. pretty soon 20 years goes by and you're like, those were the glory days. Right. And you were out of the zone. Right. You weren't right. in the zone. Right now is the glory days. And as yeah. soon as we can realize that, then right. every day we wake up with gratitude. The zone of presence. Right. Yeah. Be in the zone, stay on target, follow through is our motto. Be in the zone, stay on target, follow through. And that, that pertains to martial arts. If you're in the zone, you have to have the right mindset. Right. You have to stay on target by hitting the right spot. And then don't just hit it, follow through. Right. Same thing in life. Be yes. in the zone, in your mindset, stay on target on your goals, and then finish your goals. Right. Follow don't, through. Don't just stop when it gets hard and say, ah, I give up. I'm, I'm going to do something else instead. Right. No, this follow is through. really, really good. So before we, we get to nominate turn the tables and then the website um, quick, quickly touch on faith. So you said last summer was when you really accepted Christ and mm -hmm. made that, that shift. What triggered that? Had a health scare. What was it? Uh, cancer. Okay. So that was the skin cancer. Right. And has, was Mel, following Christ before that? She's always been a believer. She's been leading me to Christ for 23 years. And All right, so you've been a, you've been more strongly on the path, like definitively. She, He's kind of just been like coming along. I, she for is. Three years, once he fell asleep, I would lay his hands on him and pray over him for 23 years. So I always tell any spouse, never give did, up. Did you know that? No. Okay, she's, so she's a true case, child of God. When Mel comes on the podcast, we're going to go deeper into this. And this, you know, whether you're a believer, a lot of my followers, my audience are believers. They know that's a significant part of my life. That's why we usually touch on this in most episodes. It seems to be the people that I attract as well. And I'm attracted to. Uh, there's something to be said about that. Mel would place her hands over Eric every night after he went to sleep and pray over him. For how many years? 23 well, years, 22, years, 22, he did not know this, right? And as you heard him say, he was casually walking the walk of faith, but not really, didn't come to Christ until last summer. I talked a good talk and never walked a good walk. There you go. He talked a good talk, but never walked a good walk. He had a cancer scare last summer, a year ago. Yeah. And like, explain the trigger that really made you flip. Oh, it was that and my wife and I were struggling in our marriage and just not communicating and just a couple of, we'll, we'll divulge on that some other time. Mm -hmm. But I just, uh, one of my friends called me or he wasn't even a friend then. He was just an acquaintance that knew me because I taught his son karate. Mm -hmm. And he goes, Hey brother, I heard you're going through some stuff and come to coffee with me and my buddies. We're just a bunch of broken men and we we're trying to fix our lives through God mm. and we'll put our hands on you and pray. And I was like, I don't want your hands on me. I don't need them friends and mm. I don't need your God stuff. And, and something spoke to me and said, just go, just go. Cause he never gave up. He was relentless every day. So at first you refused. Yeah. I refused. I said, get off my back. Don't text me. And, and he never gave up. Whereas so you guys were still in touch. He wasn't yeah. like upset that you turned him down. No, and said, no. It, and, and some of my so-called, I thought they were my friends, never, never followed up on me. Never through reached my struggle. out. Yeah. Right. And it was like, hey, brother, I heard you're going through some mm -hmm. stuff. And this guy just never gave up. Mm -hmm. And so I went and I just broke down and cried and, and uh, just revealed some of my struggles. So you felt comfortable amongst that group? Instantly. Yeah. They were, they were broken like me. They didn't, right. have, a, they didn't have a mask on. No. They just opened up. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Right. I they can were, relate. They were and, real. Yeah. But they, but they had hope because they found God. And, right. And I wanted that hope. Totally understood. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I love it. And so I got baptized last summer. Oh, nice. Where? Church, church 1122. Uh -huh. I didn't want to wait for the big beach baptism. <laughs> I wanted to do it right away. So I did it. Right. Like August. Was it August 13th? Last summer. Greatest day of my life. And um, 
made a vow to, at first I did it just because uh, I thought it was following, you know, the rules. Yeah. Uh, so I read the Bible in a hundred days. I, was, right. I, was, I wanted to read it in 90, but I went 10 days over. And I found that at first I was reading it because I thought I had to, but then as I started reading it, I started knowing God more. Right. So it was more, <laughs> I couldn't wait to get into the Bible at nights. Yes. And so it became a habit. <laughs> So I'm almost done the second time in one year. Amen. Congrats, brother. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, I love hearing this. This is good. Um, great job, Mel. I mean, Man. It wasn't her. <laughs> no, I know, but you were. I mean, the, she was a. Uh, you were the conduit. But yeah, like it was, God used her. Exactly, exactly. God showed me His grace through her. Right. And uh, if she didn't show me grace, I wouldn't know the grace of God. Amen. All right, so. Uh, you're still in touch with that group of guys? Oh, I, I haven't stopped going every Wednesday. I love it. Yeah. This is so And now cool. I've been invited, guys. And right. So, yeah. It's, so it's, it's a, it a casual, not Bible study, but just. No, we, we sit at a coffee shop every Wednesday morning right. at, uh, what is it, Southern Grounds? Yeah, 630 in the morning. So Atlantic if anybody Beach. wants to come out there. A few blocks over from here. Yeah, Atlantic at Beach. the beach. And uh, we sit around outside. And, right. We just uh, get into the word or what the Pastor Joby's sermon the, mm -hmm. the Sunday before. Right. Talk about that. Talk about what struggles we deal with as men. Yeah. And uh, they're my brothers. That's beautiful. They're my brothers. I love it. Yeah. This is good stuff. Um, and the kids, are they believers? Are they yes. into uh, it? Our, is it a part of their life just as much as yours? Our daughter, she's going to Liberty University, which is a big Christian college. Right. And that was her, that was all her doing. Wow. I wanted her to stay in Florida, go to someplace closer to my son at FAU. Yeah. So keep it in, the, in your local. Right. She had a call on to go to um, Liberty. She wants to be in the Air Force ROTC and be right. a nurse. And, and uh, she's, I wish I was like her when I was her age. I wish I had that foundation. But God put me here so that I could be the father of that foundation. Yeah, so. look 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 what the offspring yeah. is. Like yeah. it's mostly her, but Yeah, but, <laughs> but there, it wouldn't have been the same if I wasn't. Dynamic in the yeah. That is very important. Like the all the ingredients are there to get that end result. Yeah. Right. So you're a good man. I, I already know. Like I could tell. Like I could tell immediately when I saw you guys. I'm like you, so I, I, I've said this before on previous episodes. God will put like this invisible spotlight on people. Like it's a spotlight, but you don't, I don't see a light. It's just like God highlights people in my vision. And I'm like, all right, like I'm somehow going to be talking to these people at some point. And it's a good thing. It's like, I love it. Um, and you, you too were some of those people. Like that was. You, you can tell who's filled with the Holy Spirit. Once yeah, you know what the Holy Spirit it's, feels like in yes, your heart. Yes, yes. It's really yeah. interesting. It's a beautiful thing. Um, definitely circle back on this when you're on here because you're on. You're just, <laughs> Yanko, nominated, Yanko nominated you. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so good. All right. Speaking of nominations, who are you nominating as a future guest? All right. She told me not to, but she's such a great speaker and such a great influencer, uh, my wife. But but I have a backup plan. In Let's case bring you, it. Um one of my instructors, she's the coolest young ladies around. She's so she's a jack of all trades and a master of everything. Awesome. Um, What's her name? Uh, her name is Miss Parocha. Yeah. Sienna Parocha. How do we spell Sienna? Uh, And does she know she's being nominated? No. Uh -uh. Uh, what's her age? Uh, 24, 25. Wow. All right. Yeah. She's a mature soul. I'll Very, take yeah. She's, she's a godly woman. Um, okay. She um, plays. She's the lead guitarist for her worship band. Nice. Um, church is a priority for her. So we give her Wednesday nights off so she can go lead her worship band. Um, she's just incredible. She's, so, she's, she's a champion in martial arts. Wow. Just after four years of being in martial arts, she just won the... The U.S. opened the biggest tournament two years really? in a row. She just won last Saturday. Wow! In Orlando, and uh, she was a firefighter. She's so she's guitar. she's way ahead of her oh, like, chronological she's an old years. soul. Yeah, and I knew right away. I love meeting this, people like God this. put her in our lives. Yep. And everybody loves her at karate. The kids love her. We call her the Punisher because she's so, <laughs> and she's she's pretty fit too. Right. Yeah, she lifts weights. And, okay. Yeah. All right. This is gonna be fun. So, 
uh, people are allowed to nominate several guests. So e even if she comes on, you're still like, <laughs> you're not off the hook. No, we you, three people nominated you. You, me, you, you should Eric, do both of them at the same time because they both have the same philosophy. Well, that'll be tough. Yeah, I, yeah. But we'll the, definitely get them both. The women on. of martial arts. I'm looking forward to this. All right, so let's let's turn the tables. Here we go. All right, you get to bring your question to me. Anything you want. All right, so since podcasts are a pretty new thing, yeah, what'd you do before podcasts? So technically, to me, this is just an extension of what I do. I've always been into fitness. I have a master's degree in exercise physiology. I've trained people like even since I was a teenager, I've been training people because people would see me train and they'd realize this guy really knows what he's doing. Like he's always going about things differently. He looks great for where he's at. I want to ask him his advice. So that turned into me wanting to like further coach and train people on a larger scale. Ended up going to school for it to make it official. Um, I owned a stu I opened a studio, ran that in Ponte Vedras from 99 to maybe 2008 or nine. Uh, by, by 2008, I had already started up on the internet. I was creating like content. I was creating downloadable video programs to sell, started building my own website, started teaching myself internet marketing. <clears throat> and, and I had more clients than anybody could handle. Like, and I had trainers working for me in the studio, but I was, a lot of people just wanted to train with me. And it became difficult to manage like a 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. schedule back to back because then I had no life. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right. The, the internet is making things possible for me to do. Like if I create a video that instructs a certain person how to do something, they could watch that anywhere in the world, any time of day, and I could be sleeping. Mm -hmm. And if they buy it, we're transacting in a way where they're getting something of value. They're getting my program, but I don't have to be there right, right there beside right. them with them. So that, that, that concept changed the dynamics of how I realized I was going to help a lot of people and get some of my life back. Right. It actually allowed me to put more and more materials out there for all different kinds of people at different stages of life with different starting points, different goals, different issues, whatever. And it allowed me to create a multifaceted content approach where I no longer had to be present with anybody unless I wanted to. So I still occasionally will train people in person. If it's like a really cool project, special person, like there's something cool about the whole thing. And I want to put the time and energy in to being in person with somebody, I will do it, but I don't have to anymore. Uh, I still coach people remotely because I'm not standing there counting reps for them. Right. I'm coaching them more on the mindset, the spirit part, the, the more ambiguous parts of developing the mental paradigm to make this a lifestyle. My videos teach them like what to do right. and how to eat. Like I've got all those videos for them. What they're looking for is somebody to help them reprogram this so they implement the how to's. Right. Two very different things. So I always have like a few clients that I'm coaching remotely which is very different than meeting somebody three times a week for 45 minutes of one-on-one -on -one training, counting reps for them. Very different dynamic. Uh, so as the internet stuff grew and like multimedia capabilities got easier and easier, I just started like trying things that appealed to me. Oh, cool. I could do an audio for this. I could start an audio podcast. Then I quickly realized I'm, it just makes sense for me to do a video podcast. And then the audio will go out to the audio feeds anyway, mm -hmm. by the way I set up the podcast. Right? And so this is fulfilling a bunch of things. Number one, I get to meet and sit down and talk with great people that I really genuinely want to get to know and have a conversation with. It's part of the reason why I don't stop you guys in the gym a lot to talk to you. I, like, I wanted to do that here. And beyond this, then we could talk about anything, right. but I really wanted to get to know you like in the seat here, like this. So it allows me to do that. It allows this story that we share to now positively impact lots of people, 
not just when I post this in a few days, but a year, two years from now, somebody's going to find this when they come into my world or they're going to stumble across it on the YouTube algorithm. Like, oh man, that guy, Eric, like his story really, th that resonated with me. And now I'm ready to like get my life back. And like everything he shared was, were the things I needed to like consume to put me back on track. Same thing's going to happen with you. Like I told you this already, like your story is going to do the same thing for lots of women. Right. And so I know that already because I've been doing this a long time. I have another podcast that's been longer running and I do it with remote people uh, on Zoom. That's how we record it. Mm -hmm. It's called the Fitness Truth Podcast. That's been going for probably three years now. Okay. Right. So this whole midlife muscle thing, I told the story on Drew's episode. Drew is the, the manager of the gym. Right. He was on he was he may have been my first guest. He asked me the story. How did you start this specific podcast? And I told him it was all inspiration from God, all divine inspiration. And I laid out exactly how it happened because I didn't have the intentions of doing a second podcast until God laid out these clear visions and steps for me. I was like, yeah, I got to do this. Right? It's like there's no question about it. So doing this actually was like clear path from God. This is what you got to be doing. You yeah. got to add this to the mix. Um, I enjoy having these conversations um, and I enjoy people being able to eavesdrop like they are on video and hearing this so that it can improve their life, their health, their fitness, their spirituality, maybe lead some people to finding the Lord if that's something they're open to. And if not, like at least we, they got a lot of other good things out of this to help have a better life and inspire them. So sometimes when we do what we do, we don't get to see the fruits of our labor. But one of the best parts of my job is 20 years later, I'll get an email or a text from a student that was a kid. Now he's an adult with a family. Say, Mr. Eklund, you might not remember me, but you changed my life and teaching me this, this, and this. I'm sure you get a lot of that from the <laughs> yeah. podcast. Yeah, yeah. You help so, people. Yeah. So one of one of my marketing strategies from the very beginning, like literally from 2006, was I knew my approach was very different than most others out there putting fitness and nutrition stuff out there. I decided I'm going to put a few good freebies out on the internet, like try this one or two exercises, see how you like it. Mm -hmm. And it, and I like I knew it was different than what most others were putting out there. Same thing with the nutrition. Like try this little snack recipe, see what you think of it. And people would actually like look for all my freebies. They'd create mini programs out of them. Or sometimes I would actually create a miniature like three exercise program. Like I know for the right person, that's all they need right now. Yeah. Like, and for them, I knew it's going to do a lot. And sure enough, like I'd have people... After maybe nine months, 10 months, 11 months, 12 months of getting started, people were emailing, hey, I found some of your free programs and free exercises and I started using them faithfully and I can't believe it, but I'm getting into the best shape of my life and I'm like 48 or I'm 61 or 55. Like, where have you been all my life? Right. Like me seeing that was like, you know, thank you Lord for like yeah. letting me see that this is what I should be doing. Because I know these people, if they were to go to like a CrossFit class or a HIT class or, you know, a crazy whatever, plyometric, mm -hmm. whatever class, they would be toast. Mm -hmm. Like I have countless stories of people getting injured and having to go to rehab or get surgery from getting off the couch in a very sedentary state, going to try these classes. Oh, we'll modify it for you since right. you're just starting. Right. No, you're not modifying. You get yeah. to like help this person from zero. Like they need a way different starting point than that. Right. And so for me, I know there's way more people in that boat as opposed to the people who are like kind of capable already. They can re absorb the punishment and still be fairly okay. I know there's a lot more people needing and wanting a gentle approach, but still want the results and the outcomes and the changes they're seeking. So for me, putting this out there like that is you know, it allows me to take the gifts God has given me and share those gifts with the people who need them the most. 
And for me, that's my way of honoring those gifts. You know, thank you, Lord, for giving me this way of seeing the body and understanding the mind. Now I get to bring those to the world so that the people can benefit from them and have better lives themselves. So like doing this is part of what feeds into that. You asking me the questions allows me to share the backstory, the stuff that's not so easy to see when you're just looking at me or meeting me talking casually. Now the viewer gets to hear my reasons for doing this and how genuine they are and how much I just want to help people and how a scenario like this enables us to share the why behind it and give them even more reason like, wow, He's taking the time to do this. Eric and Mel have taken the time to do this. The previous guests have taken their time to do this so that I could see it, learn, be inspired. And now, yeah, I should go take action now because of their good intentions. Now I'm going to go do this too. Are you in a point in your life where you're coasting and satisfied <laughs> and content or you got a bigger plans? Oh, bigger plans. Okay, like good. I want to help more people yeah. just like the rest of us. We're going to get a year older every year but we still need to stick to this to make the most of this life. And so sharing the journey, like me sharing every episode, every week, every month, every year, people are seeing me in real time go through the aging process, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes I share other videos on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, uh, in my video membership. Like I share my training as I'm aging, right? So they're gonna, <clears throat> they're gonna see a guy in his 50s head toward his 60s keep training in his 60s, and I'm gonna share those programs inside the video membership. So my members, whether they're longtime members back from starting in 2006 who are still with me, or newcomers who might join today, my membership, they're gonna follow me on the journey. Like I'm gonna inspire them by my continuous actions and sharing the programs I'm doing that I'm creating as I go along and creating so that other people can do them as well, whether they're male, female, in their mid forties, in their late sixties, early seventies, I instruct in my videos how to modify for exactly where you're at and, and what you should be doing. Does that help? Absolutely. <laughs> so oh, and the other thing is, this is uh, a almost fully organic supplement I launched about seven or eight months ago. Oh wow. Uh, actually nine or 10 months ago. It's the Brain Belly Body Elixir Mixer. Those of you on cam, you might, some of you might already know about this, but this is, was five years in the making, six in one combination uh, foundational fitness formula. And this is really a big part of the business now because a lot of people are discovering, well, what is this, what does this 54 year old guy take for his nutritional supplementation in addition to the way he eats? And <clears throat> really if we're putting out the physical output every day, um, it becomes more of a challenge to get nutrition in. So I just like narrowed down what are the essentials the average person who is active, not sedentary, right. but active, right. needs to be taking in for their brain, belly, and body so that they have all their basic needs met regardless of what the fluctuations in a daily diet look like for most people, right? Because we're right. busy, crazy schedules, whatever. We don't always exactly eat the way we know we should or want to. So this more than just fills all the gaps, it really fuels, fuels us for what we want to do. So would, that's really the bigger picture of where I'm, I'm aiming for. That's good. That's I would good. love to get something like that uh, with me and my wife, but in a cake version or an ice cream version. You, know? <laughs> you could drop a <laughs> scoop into your cakes on, on uh, your weekend bake-offs. Yeah. That's it. So some of you, before we wrap up, um, we got to show your website. Yanko is now in, in the, in the uh, video view. He came to, to lay down, uh, his 15 his, seconds of fame. 15 seconds of fame. He'll be back next week on the next episode. I promise if he doesn't have somebody beautiful sitting over in the corner <laughs> to distract him and make him go get the, the loving he was getting from Mel. Uh, but Yanko's here. If you want to meet him, he's on the, he's on the carpet in the middle. Yanko, good boy. Good boy. Yeah. Um, all right. So what's the website for zone? zone dash jacks jx.com all right i'm going to put this in the show notes but it's zone z-o-n-e dash j-a-x for jacks.com correct right thank zone you. dash jacks.com that's going in the show notes as well thank you yeah you're welcome my pleasure so that is your local martial arts school here in jacksonville to, on beach boulevard in san pablo right? san pa beach, yeah. beach in san pablo um very cool 
And do you guys do any social media, any Instagram posts, Facebook? I don't do social media. <laughs> she, she does. Yeah. Okay. Is, is it for zone or just for you personally? It's for zone. All right. What's the handle for uh, Insta? Zone Martial Arts. Zone Martial Arts on Instagram. Okay, Zone Martial Arts on Instagram and Facebook. Eric, thank you, brother. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Appreciate Big time. It. This has been awesome. It was my uh, pleasure. Deeply appreciated. That's it for this episode. Make sure you share it. Let us know in the comments um, what you what you liked about it, what you want to hear more of next time. Uh, if you also want to see and hear from Mel on a future episode, please post in the comments. Yes, we want Mel. We want Mel. And we'll make sure we get her on here. And as always, if you have any questions, please post those in the comments as well. Uh, and share this with somebody in your life who you feel might need some kind of inspiration to either get on track for the first time ever or get back on track if they've fallen off somehow. Doesn't matter how long they've been off. This could be the trigger that, that gets them back on track living a better life. And if they're living a, a better life and they're one of your loved ones, you know you're gonna, your life is going to be better as well. So as always, peace and much love. We'll see you on the next episode.